Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Talking In Stations Midweek Update. This is Season 1, Episode 11, and it is currently, depending on your time zone, February 7th or February 8th. What a wonderful time to record a show. So, on this week's episode, we've got the usual co-hosts. I'm Artemis Albosa from The Network. Joining me today, I've got Ron USMC from Test Alliance. Please ignore Dinosaurs. <laughs> We've also got Silver Suspiria from Federation Uprising. Hey. For those of you not watching on video, he was merely pointing or directing your attention to an eagle in advance. <laughs> also joining us today, we have our special guest, guest from Did He Say Jump? After, and I'm hoping I'm pronouncing it right, Penkin. Yeah, it's close enough. Uh, how's it going, everybody? Going well. So we'll get to discussing, discussing did he say jump a bit more in detail later on in the show. But first, let's get through some news that's been happening. Later. So on the docket, we've got a bunch of interesting kill mails, uh, thanks to a group called Losechnaya Shalopin. Now, before we get into what they did, uh, we should talk about there are a couple of groups that often get confused. The two major ones are Loshechnaya and Nolsechnaya. So Loshechnaya Solopin are traditionally Russian super capital hunters and they live around the Iridia area. So down in the southern, southwestern Losec areas of the map, you'll typically see them hunting supers, jump freighters, anything expensive, shiny moving through that area. They're a very old group, they're very good at what they do. Completely unrelated to them is a group called Nolsechnaya Shulopin. They used to be a thing, then they weren't a thing, now they're starting to be a thing again, and you'll see them having fights up and around the Syndicate area most recently. But the two groups are completely unrelated. Loshechnaya is Russian, Nolsechnaya is mostly American, like USTZ. So don't confuse the groups. But what Loshechnaya has been doing recently is actually getting on a very interesting kill mail of a jump freight. Now, they killed an arc. The arc alone was extremely expensive. We're 75 billion-esque. That's like more than titans nowadays. And that's because it was carrying 71 excavator mining drones and a, a token excavating ice harvester drone. And all of them dropped. Every single one of them, the loop fairy said a massive yes. But this is just a, a crazy kill mail. And you may notice the fit on the arc. He's fit with adaptive nanoplatings. And if you look at his capsule kill mail, you'll notice he has high-grade slaves in. This is because, unlike the other jump freighters, the, the HP layout on the arc makes it beneficial to armor tank it instead of haul tank it. And especially when you add in the slaves in there, you just get significantly more tank. So this guy, he really, really, really didn't want to die. But LSH really, really, really wanted to kill him. And boy, did they get the loot for the trouble. So my question is, is that Omeka Gold? Omelka Gold? The, um, he's the guy that hunts the excavator drones from goons. He does the bushing, the five bushing ships. And on the thread, people were saying that this was him. And why didn't he just sell them at Goons? But I don't know. I, I didn't hear either way. As far as I have seen, there has been zero confirmation. It is pure speculation that this was him. But we don't know. So it'd be interesting if it was. Uh, certainly there'd be quite a few Imperium-aligned groups who'd be happy if it were. But uh, there has been no confirmation that this was indeed Omeka Gold. In any case, LSH has been doing some other interesting things. Uh, they tried to do what they have been known for, which is gank super capitals. Only this time, instead of ganking one that was moving, apparently there was a Moloch who was titan ratting, and they were trying to set up a trap for it. They've been hunting him for a while. Only this time, Initiative knew that they were hunting him. He was Initiative Moloch. And they set their own trap to catch the Dread Bomb. And they did it quite successfully, dropping a super capital fleet and a Munin fleet on top of the Dread Bomb, plus carriers and faxes for support, to the tune of 105 billion Isk in losses for LSH. 
So uh, good job to both troops, to LSH for setting up a trap, for trying to kill things that other people would just pass up, saying, meh, it's under a super capital umbrella, forget it. And good job for initiative for dropping the hammer on them. The dreaded double trap. The trap, reverse trap. <laughs> In some CCP-related news, there is a new launcher, which you may or may not have seen yet. Uh, if you haven't seen it, you can enable it, and I would highly recommend it because it's actually pretty freaking cool. It has some new settings. It's, got, uh, it's a bit more reliable in my experience. I've had some personal issues with the old launcher, uh, weird GUI bugs, weird defects. Sometimes it just didn't launch or it would lag pretty bad. So if you've been having those issues, try out the new launcher. It may solve this for you as it has for me. But you can test it out. It's a new launcher. There's a dev post on it, which will be linked in the show notes and on our website. It's also pinned in our Discord if you want to go and check that out. And it's, it's got a lot of ad space, but it's got some cool features along with it. Have you guys, have you used the new launcher yet? Yeah, I think it's, it's very nice and it's very clean, uh, other than the ad space, of course, but the, to me, one. Yeah, I'm using it. I like it a lot. One I, thing I think that the, I am... the grouping is a little goofy, you know, like the how you click the wheel icon or the cog and then add it to a group or create a new group and then you just close it and now it's part of that group that you can hit from the. So that's a little goofy, you know, and that'll probably need some more explaining and some more refinement, but um, I, I like it overall. That's actually the thing I'm most excited about is the, the launcher groups, uh, particularly also the new settings that they have for choosing your profile, right? Instead of having a, a separate menu that you have to go through, it's all in a, a single menu now, and it's significantly easier to swap profiles. For me in particular, I have an alt who sometimes is a combat character, sometimes is a mining character, and I use two different overview settings and even different UI scalings depending on which monitor I have it on for the different purposes. So changing the profiles significantly easier now. The new groups, I think they're going to be super useful. And to understand fully how to utilize all these tools, Talking in Stations, in fact, Matterall is going to be putting out a tutorial on how to swap over to the new launcher, get CC set up if you haven't done that yet, or Thunderdome if you're an Alliance tournament pilot, and generally just how to use the new launcher. So be on the lookout for that. It's going to be hitting our YouTube channel and, of course, our website if you want to see that. So following up on some stuff we talked about last week, all of the areas of fighting that we discussed, barring one, have continued to fight on, and in fact we've seen fighting start up in new areas of space. So let's go around the map, starting from the northwest, within Pure Blind itself, Skillier, or pardon me, Triumvirate is still fighting for Sov, trying to sit up in Pure Blind, despite the fact that they're continuing to lose corpse, continuing to lose members, but they're still putting out fleets. They're still holding on to one system. They still have the system of, if I can read it, what is that, GTAC M418 within Pure Blind, and they're fighting with Old School and various other entities. And of course, with things like this, it's so close to other entities. It's so close to the initiative in Cloud Ring. It is so close to Tribute and to Declan that there's going to be third parties. You're going to have NC, you're going to have Init, you're going to have even Black Legion show up from time to time. So keep an eye out and on snuff. battles there. Oh yeah, Snuff is a good point. Snuff I can't believe I forgot. Line. So keep an eye on that. Battles certainly have a potential to spiral out of control, even if Tri is a mere shadow of their former selves. We'll see if they can rebuild and start a new empire up. Well, that's the key, right? I mean, that's... Uh the fighting and the having the fleets, you know, if it's fun, people will come, you know, and even if you have just a one little small corp or two little small corps, if you're having fun, people will congregate, you know, that's how to do it. Yeah. And maybe they should try and, and diplo with some of those free range groups out there. There's, there's plenty of groups, even just in low sec that they might be able to, you know, maybe band together. Um, there are some people picking on them that have a lot of enemies. So, there's a lot to be had there. It wouldn't be unprecedented for Tri to team up with people, although Tri does have a history of just as soon as possible. They want to have the shortest blue list possible because they, they do thrive on content. 
In fact, recently many attribute their fall, their lack of members, etc., to them dropping from Winter Coalition, uh, basically dropping blue status with fraternity, all the groups down in the southeast where they had a bunch of friends, and then as a result they lost their SAV, they lost a significant portion of their members, and have now had to restart up in pure blind. But we'll see if they decide to make that decision again. You know, quickly on that, it's a fine line you have to walk as an organization, right? You don't want to be this blue donut, you know, with no content, but it's still a game where if you want to succeed, you got to have a few friends. And, you know, Fed Up is sort of in that position, and we took a lot of flack for going down to Legacy, but, you, but you know, you, you got to walk that line. There's a, a balance there. You can't be all on one or the other. Moving a bit further to the east, but still in the north end of the map, in the Kalvala Expanse, we've still got continued fighting with Goonswarm SIGs continuing to reinforce Popeye hubs and then getting some more dropped in these low ADM systems. Remember, this is, or was rather, some renting space for Pandemic Horde. It used to be a relatively strong portion of their income. It sort of died off in the months past, and so now the lower ADMs are easy pickings for the Goonswarm SIG that hit, or pardon me, the Imperium SIG, not just Goonswarm, that has moved up into the area. So keep an eye out for fights in that area. One interesting thing to note is that this is directly adjacent to Geminate, and Geminate was recently the focus of some fighting between Test Lines, Please Ignore, and Horde. However, Test Lines, Please Ignore has sort of pulled back from that front. Indeed, they even lost their staging Fortazar, multiple staging Fortazars, in fact, but the one in particular that we want to look at is their faction fort, the Dracius Fortazar, which died to the Northern Coalition Superfleet. And as these Fortazars are going down and Test is pulling out, it is known that Northern Coalition is going to be moving their Superfleet. So they're not going to be staging that in Geminate anymore. Do you guys think that's going to have an impact on the fighting in the Kavala Expanse? You know, I I think that, you know, the NC Supers, uh, this is my opinion, but, you know, they were there and they were doing an excellent job of keeping us down, right? And, and keeping, you know, and keeping our heads down and dropping on us and, and doing some great work there. And I think because we pulled out, uh, and we took all of our subcaps and moved them to perimeter that there's, they don't want to sit there and not be used, you know, NC, you know, are an active group. They like to fight and they're going to move somewhere where they can get in the fights and enjoy it. So I think that it, it will have, you know, some play in Kavala, but only in the sense that they won't be showing up as that sort of ball bat. So, we're still fighting there. We killed a Tatara, I think it was, last night. Um, so there's still going to be a lot of fighting there, but it'll probably be carriers, lots and lots of carriers, because, you know, Pandemic Horde has got a lot of carriers. Jumping back in time uh, a month or so, we had Black Legion up in Geminate that seemed to be a real catalyst for the content there. And now, Asher... Did they say Jump used to be in Black Legion? Were you guys in Black Legion while they were deployed in Gemini? Uh, no, we were not. We were uh, actually during the last big war against Tess. That's when we were in Black Legion. That was our main stay of content there. So when we were in that organization. Ah, uh, okay. We'll continue in with that thread a little bit later in the show. I just wanted to see if there was anything else we could add to this conversation. But instead, we'll move on and talk about some other things that have been happening around the map. Continuing around the circle, going a bit further down south, but still on the eastern side of the map, we're looking at Ethereum Reach. And as we mentioned last time, there's been some good reporting on the conflict here going on from the New Eden report. The fighting is still continuing. And as we mentioned again on the last show, it seems to be that Prothean Alliance is just continuing to have their SOV chewed up. It's being taken away by the other entities, and particularly just a game dot has been picking up quite a few systems from Prothean in the recent days since the last show. So keep an eye out for some skirmish fleets for Sovereignty Warfare happening in that area, and we'll let you know if anything big, game-changing happens there, but just something to keep an eye out on. I always think it's so funny when I see these sort of Sov changes. I don't really know you know, those kind of groups. And I just look and I'm like, who are these people? But I think it's so exciting that it is like all these kind of random groups, like in this huge struggle. And I'm like, oh, okay, cool. Where's that on the map? <laughs> 
Indeed. And a, a bit closer to your home there, uh, Ron, is Scalding Pass. And within Scalding Pass, as mentioned on the last show, the groups in the Northeast, uh, they're called the Cure, collectively, have been starting to make a push on the Scourge sovereignty, which Scourge, Scourge took from Triumvirate when Triumvirate left the area. And they've started reinforcing lower ADM systems where renters aren't as uh, heavily fortified. And indeed, they've managed to take a few. However, Scourge has been fighting back and been taking them back. So there's, there's a bit of an effort. I've actually been involved in some of these fleets personally. Uh, my group, the network, has sort of been down there because the Cure helped us out in defending our stuff in the past. And so we're getting in on the good fights. Very, very small-scale sc- stuff for the majority of the time. Indeed, the Cure is a majority USTZ. That's where the majority of these fights have been happening, for me at least. And that is very much out of time zone for Scourge. And that's intentional because they're, they're very different sized groups. So there's a lot of we're trying to lower the ADMs and then that widens the sovereignty vulnerability timers enough for us to hit the SOV. So it'll be interesting to see if Scourge, who are currently deployed further down south in Immense and Tenerifice area, if they can make their way back up north to contest those timers in a significant way. But let, let's talk about Immense and Tenerifice. On the last Sunday show, we were looking forward to a fight that may be happening on the border between Tenerifice and Detrid, and that was over an iHub in... Does somebody remember the system? Yeah, it was on the very far right. It was like I H or some weird Tech one. Q. That's it. That was the system. Yep. And unfor- does anybody know what happened with Yeah, so they... Um... We just had too much. We blobbed, so they didn't undock. So, <laughs> you know, we showed up. Um, you know, we spammed local, and uh, you know, and then that was that. It was pretty overwhelming. Plus, it was uh, you know near Chinese New Year too, right? I think a lot of those guys were off on vacation. You know, so FRT didn't have much around. Um, so yeah, it was it went out with with no fight. Yeah, pro god. Big format gave it- though. An interesting story about the all of the posts that were going around Reddit, all the leaks from various alliance pings about the expectation that Fraternity was going to show up. And there, there's a very funny story that Pro God told that I won't spoil it, but if you haven't heard it, go listen to the lap at last episode of Talking in Stations. We had a bunch of great guests and a really funny story from Pro God on that one. But Skill Yourself and Scourge also teamed up to have a fight in Immensi today with Ron's group, Federation Uprising. So, Ron, can you tell us a bit more about that? Or actually, you were at work during this fight, weren't you? I was at work. Uh, Silver, were you around for this fight? I was at work, too, but uh, my guys were in it, yeah. Well, it has to be, you know, and I was kind of teasing you before the show, you know, it's very exciting, right? Because now the cavalry's here, and I, I don't know if we outnumbered them three to one or 3.1 to one, whichever one it was. <laughs> but, uh, you know, uh, skill, you lost some, and, and I heard that their faxes were just tanking like mad. That's what they were saying. Like one of the faxes was tanking like 400 subcaps. That's insane. Yeah, that's a minute cow for you. Yeah. yeah so the numbers were They're nasty. The numbers were on the legacy side of things. The system was YTAC FZ5N in Immensi. Apparently the fight was over a Rataro that was reinforced, which belonged to Fed- Federation Uprising. And the fight involved 539 members of Legacy to 162 members of a combined Skill Yourself and Scourge fleet. And looking at those That's Minikawa- an even fight right there. Yeah, that's even totally. right there. That's even. <laughs> Skill yourself is good, man. And so they is are. Scourge. Like, don't even, don't even, like, don't expect them to to play average because they are above average and they're really good. But, Absolutely. Oh, but it's sort of changed the tide a little bit now that uh, the test is home and XIX getting involved a bit too. Um, you know, now now we're just uh, beefing them with the numbers. But I fully agree with Ron. Those guys are damn good. Looking at these Minikawa's lost mails, you've had at least one that tanked over 3 million damage. Going through them, they're all extremely well fit, very high tank, dead space faction modules throughout the mids and the low slots. Just, yeah. Well, and that's the thing about them. All of their ships are proper fit, and they don't bling to bling, right? The ships are well thought out, 
where they put the money is where they get the best bang for their buck. And, you know, the ships just perform optimally They're, I don't know who their, um, you know, fit guy is or their, you know, their theorist is, but they, they do a great job and all of that. Indeed. And we'll be looking forward to see more content coming out of there and them in the future. One final follow-up note to something we mentioned on the last show, which was the situation in period basis, where we saw Sov transitioning from Midas 22 and Red Alliance over to Goonswarm Federation. We've now got it confirmed that Red Alliance is indeed moving, Midas 22 presumably moving with them as they were a renter group, as I understand it. Uh, rumor has it they're going to curse. I've also heard rumors they're going to Scalding Pass. We'll keep you updated on where they go and what they do but we have gotten confirmation that it is Red Alliance moving out of the region. Oh, and a side note really quick, we dropped uh, another keep star uh, getting ready for this, and we're going to continue to litter the entire area with keep stars. So we I know, yeah, one right next crazy. door. <laughs> yeah, and oh shit, yeah. All right. Well, let's get into the meat of today's show, what I am personally excited to talk about, and that is Did He Say Jump? Uh, Did He Say Jump is a group with a fantastic name, if you are at all familiar with PvP, particularly Fleet PvP. And Asher, really quickly, you guys have been in the news recently for a meme fleet that you did with a bunch of condors. Can you walk us through what is the deal with condors? Well, first off, we it's not a meme fleet, it's a superior frigate doctrine, as we like, <laughs> as we prefer to call it. Um, but uh, the idea is that, you know, condors are cheap, they're rarely used, like Suetoni has already done Kestrels, so we're doing Condors. And as you can see here watching the video uh, made by one of our members, uh, Squishy, uh, this is Condor Country, as it's called, and that's what the uh, fleet is called. And um, we've already given a couple people in our region uh, PTSD anytime they see Condors. So uh, it, it's getting a little out of hand, but, you know, we're going to continue doing what we do. Now, what is your is that... region? Uh, okay, we currently live in... Uh, the bleak lands, uh, but you know our ancestral homeland. It is our ancestral homeland originally, but uh, in my opinion, our ancestral homeland is Hematar. But that's just a matter of opinion. Uh, but that's usually where we base out of uh, this uh, bleak lands. Gotcha. What was that wrong? Oh yeah, I was. You know, you mentioned Squishy. Is Squishy the same Squishy that's usually the scout for Bjorn? Uh, you know, I don't know. Oh, because that guy's good. Uh, <laughs> that's, uh, that's extra squishy from the initial. Oh, <laughs> oh okay. Totally different squishy. <laughs> and yes, you, he is good. You mentioned briefly there that your ancestral homeland is Hematar. Can you give us a bit of history? When did Diddy say jump for him? Like, what's the story of your group? Well, I mean, we've uh, we've always been we've always formed around our uh, the FC of our hearts. Predator. Unfortunately, he couldn't be here today, so they sent me in his stead. Uh, uh, I can't I can't give you as much background about the early start of Did He Say Jump, but the the idea is really it was formed by a bunch of uh, faction warfare guys primarily, and uh, so they were formed uh, by a bunch of faction warfare guys, old Amar guys back in 2011, 2012. And uh, they formed a corp. They moved. We've been. They've been all over the place. Like uh, we've been the Black Rise. They. That's where did he say jump kind of made its mark. And that was when they formed the first alliance. Uh, and our current corp is kind of based off of that old alliance of did he say jump. Now have you um, got? Go ahead. No, you go ahead. I was gonna. It's kind of leaving. I was going to quickly discuss okay. the difference between the alliance did he say jump and the corporation did he say jump. So did you guys like form a single corporation alliance or was there an alliance of a bunch of corporations that all merged down to the corp that you are now? What's the what's the deal? Well, the story is, is that um, did he say jump the alliance, uh, which disbanded a couple of years ago, about a year or two ago, and uh it was formed, you know, by Pred. He formed the alliance. Um, they were known for getting in fights with people like Overload Everything. So, you know, they fought people like Overload Everything. They've had fights with various other groups, Snuff, SC. Uh, we kind of fought everybody, all the major power blocks in low sec at one point or another. Uh, the alliance itself disbanded due to uh, a couple of reasons. We had some issues. There's a little bit of drama. You know, what gets most alliances nowadays is drama. And 
um, the fact that Predator Elite kind of felt that, you know, he wanted to try and move on from the game personally because he'd been playing for a very long time. Gotcha. So now, but he's back now. He's still active. Uh, yes, he's back. So he came back, you know. Uh, I guess any good Eve retirement, you, you retire for like a month and then you immediately come back or something like that for a lot of people. I, I did the same thing myself, so uh, I have some experience with it. Um, so he's back now. Yeah, we formed the corporation uh, kind of as this kind of to bring everybody back into the fold, all our old membership, um, and kind of get back to doing what we do best, which is PvP, honestly. So let's talk about that, the PvP that you're doing now. So are, you're still a low sec group, as you mentioned. You used to be staged in Molden Heath. Now you're staged in, I've already forgotten, what's the Mimitar low sec group? Uh, it's Mimitar, now we're in the Bleaklands. Ah, thank you. Wow, I really messed that. Uh, it's no problem, it's no problem. So who are your neighbors around that area? Who are you fighting with? Well, right now... Um, We've currently we're currently fighting against uh, a number of people, uh, mainly SC Siege Green. Those are the two main people. Uh, we've we've had a number of fights, some some very big, some kind of small. We've also gone up against a couple of smaller groups, such as Cruisers Crew, DNG. Um, for the longest time, our our kind of our rival when we were re just recently reformed the uh, corporation was uh, Hall Pen. So uh, right here, you're seeing a video. I think you just put up on the uh on the stream this is a video of us fighting cruisers crew and shoot first who's another low stack group and uh in this particular fight uh it kind of turns ends up being a little one-sided uh it was a good fight uh I, hopefully the other side felt the same way too but um like i said it turns out to be a little one-sided in this particular fight so the way that fights happen in low sec, what are you guys fighting over nowadays? Because money moons, they're no longer passive income. You now have to anchor Athenors and mine them yourselves manually. Do you get fights over Rorquals or mining fleets? Or do fights just happen because people are out there roaming for content and things sort of escalate? Or how do fights happen in low sec? Well, fights kind of happen the same way that fights in Nullsec happen. I mean, we're not trying to capture Sov or anything. We're pirates. We're not affiliated with any faction warfare uh, group. We do not capture uh, systems for Amar militia or Mimitar militia. We're, we're straight up pirates. But what I mean by fights kind of start the same way as Nullsec is it's usually over structures. That's the main thing. Um, while money moons aren't necessarily a big deal like they were back when we had the old alliance because we had a lot of fights over money moons. Um, you still get fights over Athenors, and of course, a lot of the fights we're having nowadays are just kind of like grudge matches. You know, one side doesn't like us; they want to they want to show us, you know, or they don't. Not necessarily that they don't like us, but they want to kind of like get us out of the area. You know, we're kind of disrupting their flow of things. Maybe we're killing a few too many other ships. I don't know, but it's kind of like a grudge thing. You know, we're kind of going at each other, um, and you know, we're all looking for content. So that's mainly how fights start. Usually we tack one of their guys, they form a response, uh, or we see that they got a fleet for and we form a response. You have things like that. What are the average kind of sizes of the fleets that you attack and or form with? Okay, well, um, most of the time, low sec, as you probably suspect, has a lot of small gang PvP in it. Um, it has, a, it has a lot of small gang PvP, uh, but we've been able to, recently we've been forming fleets of about 40, 50 people, which is pretty a pretty respectable fleet size for um, just a corporation, in my opinion. It's a uh, big fleet, man. Yeah. That it does include some alts, but, it, you know, who doesn't use alts in fleets? You know, even big null sec blocks do it, so. But these are big fleets, you know. We're engaging other corps that are almost twice their size at times, or alliances, I should say. Um, so like in this particular fight that this kill report, here, we actually teamed up with, uh, uh, we actually teamed up with Spectre fleet for this particular fight. You know, they were having a roam. They expected some, they expected a fight. They were trying to bait it out. And we were going to act as kind of a, a bat phone, essentially. Um, uh, as you can see here, uh, Shadow Cartel answered their fight call, and we, of course, assisted um, Spectre. It, it was a very huge fight. A lot of uh, capitals were lost. A lot of sub-capitals were lost. Um, as you can see here, we lost about over 20 bill. Uh, Shadow Cartel lost uh, almost 50, over 50 bill. So, you know, the fights can get pretty huge at times, you know. 
know, it's not like what we had in Black Legion, but you know, it's still pretty big for our area. So we've been seeing a lot of sub-capital fights, particularly with like heavy armor, Balgorns, Lashax. Typical Roman games seem to be shield skirmish, right? Orthrises, things like that. And we're seeing a lot of capitals, but a distinct lack of super capitals in these fights. Well, you know, I don't, I don't really want to get into detail about supers, uh, but you know, it, for a group like us, it, you become more reluctant to drop supers if you have any, mainly because you don't have that that guarantee of protection. Okay, we don't, we can't really escalate like some of these bigger blocks can. So you know, we have to kind of hold back and take it easy sometimes. If if you get what I'm saying. Yeah, I've totally been there. You know, you have supers probably, but you know. Eve is a game of intel, <laughs> so somebody will know that you're undocking them, and then there's always that risk that you're going to get over-escalated on. I, I totally agree with you, and I, and I think that's the same for a lot of low set groups. Yeah, I think a lot of groups are afraid of the big bad snuff. Our, our alliance, you know, makes makes a joke. It's like anytime you mention snuff and comms, like everybody docks up, you know? Yeah, not so, just snuff, but you know, you're up north there at the tip. There's a lot of groups that could uh, could come down and smite your supers. True, true. So you're down, you mentioned that you don't take any faction warfare systems, but I'm sure your typical Roman content, at least down in the south where you are, does that have a lot of ganging faction warfare runners, or do you see there's been a lot of talk about faction warfare bots recently? Do you see that in your day-to-day -day life? Um, I haven't seen a lot of bots. I mean, it's it's hard to tell whether somebody's a, just a really cowardly uh, pilot or if they're a bot. You know, it, it, they maybe they don't want to take the fight. You know, maybe they're more focused on ratting. I haven't really seen it. I'm I'm used to the old uh, the old oh fit warp core stabs in all your low slots in against faction warfare pilots. So, you know, you you don't get surprised when they they run. They see like a frigate on the outside and they kind of run away. Um, but for the most part, yeah, a lot of our fights have occurred with um, faction warfare individuals. Like D and Gs in faction warfare, we fought them a lot. They're kind of like um, like frenemies of ours in a lot of respects, you know. No, you know, we, we had our. Um, they used to be in uh, Test Alliance, uh, and then they were in Black Legion uh, recently. It's dirt and, and glitter. Right? Yeah, dirt and glitter. Yeah, dirt and glitter. Sorry about that. You know, that's now that you, you know, that you were in Black Legion, uh, you know, how do you feel about some of the big power blocks around you? Do you have like any, you know, sort of friendships, sort of enemies, or do you even want to get involved? Because, you know, the battle reports are pretty respectful. I mean, you, you got some solid comps and you've got some good pilots. So, you know, do you kind of stay out of that? Or, you know, uh, what's your thoughts on that? I mean, I think if we had the time and we had the capability, we would gladly assist those who ask for help. I mean, Preds played the game for almost a decade now. And when you played Eve for that long, you make, you, you know, people. So, uh, I mean, he's gonna, he has connections. He knows people. I mean, just about anybody who's played forever knows people. So, uh, I mean, there's people we can call on. There's people that can call on us. I mean, we mainly don't get involved because we've had bad experiences with Nullsec in the past. One of the reasons we left BL is we just felt like Nullsec really wasn't our playground. Uh, more so, you know, I like not have getting bubbled all the time. So that's just, that's just me. Um, but uh, for the most part, yeah, it's just Nullsec's just something we don't really get involved with, uh, uh, you know, unless somebody really needs us, but usually we, you know, we don't get called on that much to, to help out there. Sometimes we do, but sometimes we don't. Yeah, that's interesting. Is it is it the mechanics like bubbles or <clears throat> difference in fleet comps that you'd like to run that that work in in low sec but not so much in null sec? They go like, how is the content different for those who who may not know? Uh, honestly, uh, I, the main difference in my opinion between tech and, and null sec is mainly the bubble mechanics, and of course you have stations that you can dock up in. You, I mean. It's, Everybody has citadels in Nullsec, but you can't always dock up in their citadels. You got stations. Most stations, if you're not a Faction Warfare member in Faction Warfare space, you can dock at them without any issue. So that makes a big difference in how, um, you know, where to where to have your fleet stage at, you know, things like that. But for the most part, it's not much different um, because I, I know that goons for a while were using materials as their main fleet doctrine. I mean, it 
back before they nerfed Macarials a little bit, Macarials were the main fleet doctrine of uh, Alosec. And of course, today, you know, I see a lot of people in Nullsec moving to Balgorns, Nightmares. Uh, those are a common, those have, those have been staples of low sec combat for quite some time. Um, the main, the real big difference though, is the pods, you know, you can get away with having an extremely shiny pod in your, in your sub cap in low sec more so than null sec. Cause you know, you don't have bubbles. Are the pilots who just fly around and their entire gameplay is going around in like a, a cloaky smart bombing, fast warping T3, trying to catch those shiny pods. Is that still a popular thing? it is uh we actually have a few members that of ours that actually do but both sides do it so it's not really like this big secret that's not this big secret weapon we're using Uh, both sides are trying to get the shiny pods and there's even third partiers out there trying to get them uh we we used to have a guy in a region called mystical might who was like an expert at it uh, you know so you know shout out to that guy i guess there is one final difference I want to hit on between low sec and null sec, and that is the interesting mechanics relating to what's it called the, the security system, all the the timers, suspect, criminal, etc. And within low sec, if you're attacking somebody who you can't legally fight because of a war deck or because they themselves are suspect, you're going to lose security status. And if you go through the list of all the pilots in Diddy Say Jump, quite a few of them are either at negative ten or near it. And what that means is, number one, they can be freely shot by anyone in low sec without the person getting attacked by gate guns or losing security status themselves. And also it means that you guys can't easily go into high sec, do logistics like that as far as moving assets and things. So even though you're closer to high sec uh, for logistics purposes, you can't go there as easily to resupply. How do you guys manage with that? Well, it's not an open secret. Every every low sec alliance could probably tell you. I mean, you just use neutral alts. That's that's the main thing. Third party alts. That's how you get it done. Um, when it comes to those mechanics, though, like how kind of dangerous or how detrimental they are. Honestly, there's a lot of ways to game it, and it's not very hard because um, what we'll do is if we have tackle ships and you know we're neg ten, so if we engage a non flashy target, we're gonna get gate guns on us every time um the best way to get around it is you have multiple tacklers you tackle one guy tackles warps off and then somebody else holds tackle then that guy who tackled originally come warps back in and reasserts tackle and at that point the gate guns will not engage the tart you anymore so there's a lot of ways to game it um and um one of the another way we game it of course is that uh you know the, other than that, uh, of course, you get you. You always want to get in ships if you're in DPS. You just want to be really tanky. That's one of the main ways. So gate guns really don't affect you if you're got a really tank ship. Um, that's one way we get around it. But like I said, the main way is to warp warp in and out to tag the target, warp out, warp back. You know. For those unfamiliar with the particular mechanics of the crime watch system, I remember the name. What he's talking about there is the engagement timer. So if you have an engagement timer, that's the little five-minute blue timer you'll see in the top left-hand corner of your screen with somebody, then you can freely engage with them even if they are not suspect in low sec. You can still engage with them, or even in high sec, frankly, without Concord intervention. And so what these pilots are doing is they're going, they're attacking the person, they're getting that limited engagement timer with them, and then they're warping off and warping back. Gate guns will forget about them, and then when they engage them the second time, because they're still engaging within that five-minute limited engagement timer, gate guns will not attack them again. So that is the particular mechanic that they're utilizing. Yeah, Another, a little bit harder to do now, right, with the grid size increase. Normally, you want to get off grid. So in the old days, you could just warp to your tack at 300, and you're good, come back. But now you need a deeper tack, right? Uh, no. Uh, once you activate warp and you warp to a different point, uh, and that gate guns actually disengage. So it's even, pretty, yeah, even if you stay on grid, interesting. Yeah, even just stay on grid. Um, and of course, gate guns do have a range. I, I'm not, I think it's over 300. They stop, they lose range. But I, I'm not sure on that. Don't quote me on that. Uh, but they do have a certain range that they can only engage you at. Um, another timer, another big thing that's big is a lot of people don't know this, but a lot of people have been in low sec for a while, but newer players probably don't know this, is that if you kill a neutral pod, 
in low sec, you're going to get a red timer. And if you try to go back into high sec, Concord will actually give you the good old Concord token. So it's not fun. I've had it happen to me a few times. Frozen in space, can't move, and Concord just pops you right there. Campers of the Norvgate have uh, fallen victim to that. Interesting. So low sec is a, a very different place from null sec, but still a lot of good content and seeming like a lot of groups down there in the south at the very least, which is notably the opposite corner of the map from where Snuff is currently staged. Some interesting dynamics. Well, Snuff, Snuff, uh, Snuff is able to kind of be everywhere if they want to be somewhere. They they kind of have a they have a really good chain of logistics. Uh, uh, we've experienced it firsthand a few times. So. All right. Is there any aspect of Diddy Say Jump low sec in general that we've missed, or are we pretty solid on what we've covered? I mean, I think the the big thing that uh, I'd like to point out is that low sec's kind of like that. While a lot of the mechanic, like while some of the fights are kind of similar to what you find in other places, um, the kind of the lifestyle being neg ten and being a pirate is kind of a unique lifestyle in Eve that you don't really um, get. Okay, not being able to go into high sec is a is a big thing because you know you choose to live that way. Now, of course, you can always tag tag back your sex status, but for the most part, uh, it is uh, it's it's kind of refreshing knowing that you don't you're neg ten, and at the end of the day, when people see you, they're gonna be like, oh, this guy this guy will engage anything. For the most part. Yeah, I was gonna say when I lived in Low Sec, uh I Silver was true Neg Ten at one point. It's sort of like a badge of honor. Uh not just Neg Ten on the window, but if you look in your security status, so it goes all the way down, not Neg nine 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 nine, but true Neg Ten. Yeah. Um no round sort of go, badge right? of honor. Yeah. So um yeah, that's that's the thing, right? You, you generally consider to engage anything, like you said, and then it's diff more difficult to play the game that way. So you kind of get a little bit more respect for having not don't have the ability to go to high sec or run to high sec, right? You can't run away to, to get out of a, a fight or something and go to high sec. So interesting. For anyone unfamiliar with what he's talking about with tags, there's a mechanic where you can essentially bribe Concord and the empire factions to not dislike you anymore. So you, you buy what are, they're called tags and they are, you get them by killing certain rats or doing certain missions depending on the kind of tags in the Empire you're looking to get security for. But then you turn those tags plus a bit of isk into particular stations and you will get security status back. As we can see, fuzzworks.co.uk has a fantastic cool tool called Tags for Sec where it shows you how much it'll cost to get back from a particular security status to another security status and which tags you need plus how much isk you need. So. It, it can get quite expensive if you need to make a run to high sec and you have to turn in these tags. Uh, one thing I did want to ask you is, um, well, how do you see the health of low sec right now? Um, sort of our group left uh, the Gallimil war zone um, because it was sort of burned out from, from content, but it seems like you guys are fairly active. Do you find health, uh, low sec to be in a healthy state right now? Um, could it be better? And what do you think needs to change to make it better? Okay, so uh, I think uh, one of the things that is the real big issue is that I think the the warfare zone cycle, okay? So when content's really big in one warfare zone, everybody from the other warfare zone kind of cycles over because that's where all the content's at. Once they've expended all the content, once one group dominates the region, the, uh, the, other, the, uh, the smaller groups go to the other warfare region. Um, this is exa exemplified because our old alliance, we at one point did become the dominant force in the, the Mimitar faction warfare region. We became the dominant force at one point. And so we eventually got to the point to where there wasn't much content going on. Now, eventually, uh, so everybody kind of went to Black Rise and we didn't, we didn't see him again. And it was great. It, I mean, we got to chill for a little bit, uh, but, uh, eventually groups started trickling back because, you know, it started getting a little too saturated. So. People trickle back. They started to fight us, and that that kind of is what kind of led to the the whole war that kind of helped bring about the old did he say jump alliance. So, like I said, it's it's a big cycle. Um, you know, when one faction warfare zone gets completely capped, then everybody kind of goes to the other one to kind of take back over that one, and then everybody cycles back. It, it it's kind of a mess at times, you know. 
Um, yeah, yeah. As for um, changes, because I completely forgot the second part of your question, very sorry. Uh, right now, I think uh, low sex kind of in an okay place right now. Um, it, it's a little harder to fight over um, the way the money moons work now. It kind of makes it harder to make basically print money as it used to be. I mean, to an extent that's better and to an extent that's not as good because, you know, there's less structures to fight over. But ultimately, I think low sex doing just fine. I, I think I think if they gave more incentive to maybe like for faction warfare riders to actually like fight more so than they have right now, maybe it'd be a lot better because then you could get smaller solo PvP fights and not get maybe not get blobbed as much. But you know, honestly, I mean, I like the system as it is. We're getting kill mails. We're having fun. So I, I would just keep it the way it is right now. Fantastic. Well, thank you for lending us your time and your perspective on that and giving us a bit of history on an interesting group with a long... How long has Diddy Say Jump been a thing in one form or another? Do you know off the top of your head? Uh, probably about uh, four or five years, uh, if I were to remember. Uh, let me see here. Yeah, probably about uh, five years around that, yeah. In one form or another, because we've been in multiple forums like we were, we were once an MC. This is weird. It was a weird time. Weird times indeed. All right. Well, let's go ahead and wrap things up. Do you have any shout outs for us today, Asher? Uh, yeah, I'd like to shout out uh, Dato Coppola, uh, the most elite uh, solo PvP in all of the uh, Bleak Lands. Uh, shout out to the Australian Arnold Schwarzenegger right there. Are we being sarcastic or is this legit? No, no, no. I like, I like that dude. No, I'm just. I told him I'd, I'd make a really meme shout out for him, so you know, I did it. All right, Ron, you got a shout out for? Him? Shout out to the Perimeter Police Department. Still doing good work. You know, eyes on the ground, watching the beat. You know, rounding up criminals. <laughs> we were supposed to talk about them earlier in the show, but I forgot. Sorry about that. Suffice yeah, it to it's say, all good man. Fights are still happening. Goonswarm is there. They're in Oracles, and it provides an interesting dynamic where Test Alliance can tank their Feroxes, specifically Kinetic Thern Damage, because they know that NC and Horde are coming in Feroxes, but NC and Horde can't do the same thing because Goonswarm is there with their Oracles and, of course, use the EM and Thermal Damage. So very interesting dynamics are shaping up, and it, it's still a hotly contested area. Moving on, Silver, you got Shadows for us today. Uh, shameless recruiting plug. Eagles fed up is recruiting. We just settled in now. We're in a great PvP spot. If you're looking for something, doors are open. My shout out goes to the Talking in Stations Discord. We've grown quite a bit indeed since last Sunday's show when we had a, a plethora of FCs on from a variety of different groups. A bunch of people learned about Talking in Stations in our Discord. There's been a lot of good discussion happening. Uh, so shout out to everybody participating in that or just lurking around, seeing all the interesting things that happen. It's definitely the place to go if you want to participate in or simply view the discussion on the news happening at EVE Online. But that'll do it for us today on Talking in Stations Movie Week Update Season 1, Episode 11. Tune in to see the Episode 12 on this Sunday at 1600 EVE time, and we'll be back again next Thursday or Friday at 0100 EVE time. See you guys later.